Hey, Reader Pops! Welcome to the first reading wrap-up in the library. I got two new pillows in the background, as you can see. And this is an exciting wrap-up because I actually read 11 books in August, which is the most I've read in a month all year. Which was like my typical last year, but this year I've just been choosing books that I want to read regardless of if they're 700 pages and just going for it, not thinking about the amount per month. But I finally did a 24-hour readathon. August is without fail, the month that I read the most for some reason. I don't know why, but firstly, I can't believe this was in August. This feels like forever ago, I read Float Plan by Trish Dollar. I thought that this was going to be a summer rom-com of sorts, and I just want to stop you in your tracks right there. It's definitely not a summer rom-com. It's more of a really sad romance book set on a boat basically. Her fiance has just passed away, but he had always dreamed of going on this sailing excursion. So she takes his boat and tries to go on this excursion, except she doesn't know how to sail that well. So she has to hire some help. And then it's the love story between them two. And I honestly just didn't like anything about this book. So it is a two star, but it's not even like a, a two star that I just like disagreed or disliked the book. It's just that I, it wasn't the book for me. Like there was just nothing that I was really connecting with or getting out of it. So kindly two stars, but I've seen other people love it. it. Just wasn't for me. Next, I read The Last Word by Taylor Adams. I probably read a lot this month because I got back into thrillers a little bit. And this one I've had from Book of the Month from a few previous months and I just had never read it until somebody told me the premise of it. And it's about a girl who's reading a thriller book and then gives it a one star review. And the author absolutely comes at her at this remote house that she lives in. And it's crazy. So once I heard that was the premise, I wanted to read it immediately. And it was so fun. I think it's kind of funny how this one was written because pretty immediately the author is like coming to her house and trying to kill her. And the main girl just seems like she's not used to it, but it's just like, oh, this dude's trying to kill me. Like, what should I do? Like she's not panicking, she's not, I feel like she has no moment of freaking out. She's just like, okay, well, I'm gonna go set some traps and try to catch him on camera and figure out what's happening here. And it's like the most intense break-in of all time. I think I gave this 4.5 stars and I think I did that because of the ending and the plot twist. I didn't really know if there would be a plot twist. Like I knew there'd be a reveal, but I didn't know if it would flip on its head or anything like that, but it did. And I loved it. Didn't see it. I mean, I, see, I saw one part coming, but I didn't see the rest. And it was really great. I highly recommend this if you want a fun little thriller. This was also the month of me reading ARCs, which are advanced readers copies. So this book doesn't actually come out until November. This is Lynn Painter's new book, Betting on You. I don't know why, but at one point in time, I thought that there was going to be a sequel to Better Than the Movies. Don't know why I thought that. This is not a sequel to that. It's just its own young adult rom-com. But basically, Bailey's parents are getting a divorce. So she has to move across the country. I believe. And she meets this really annoying dude. And then a year later, they end up being co-workers. Charlie thinks that boys and girls can't just be friends. Bailey wants to prove him wrong. And then Charlie also wants to help Bailey get rid of the guy that her mom is dating. Cause you know, her parents just got a divorce and she's very uncomfortable with watching her mom be with someone new. So Charlie's like, if we fake date, we can just make this dude super uncomfortable that he like leaves your house and you can have just your mom back. So yeah, it's one of those like silly scenarios that pop up in young adult romance books. But as we all know, I'm a massive fan of young adult romance. So I loved it. I also really liked just the other characters in this book. Like her best friend is a great character. Her mom is a great character. And I don't know why, but I feel like it's always young adult romances that have the characters on the periphery really stand out and kind of add a lot to the story because it's part of their coming of age experience. It's not like this fully formed person who's just, we're just seeing like this romantic part of their life. We're just seeing like their entire kind of group around them and how they're navigating all this stuff. So I also gave this one 4.5 stars. It didn't get that five star better than the movie's rating because I had to warm up to this Charlie character. And at first I didn't like him. And I feel like they speak very differently in this book. Like there's a lot of cursing in this book. And it's like the type of cursing where they just make up different words. So it kind of cringed me out a little bit. But once we got more character development from Charlie, I started to enjoy it more. And I highly recommend because I love young adult romance. And there is zero spice in that book if I am remembering correctly. And then I I read Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. You guys have probably seen this book everywhere and don't need an explanation about what it is. Just another STEM romance by Allie Hazelwood. And I really liked this one. She's fake dating his brother. That's a trope I've never seen before. I gave this one five stars. Perhaps in retrospect, it's like a 4.75 because I will probably never think about these characters again. Super enjoyed it as far as like a straight up rom-com goes, but it's not something like Beach Read where I just remember that book forever. That's definitely a five star. So maybe we'll give this like a realistic 4.75. This one's an adult romance and Allie Hazelwood definitely writes spicy scenes and her scenes are not, I don't enjoy reading them. <laughs> 
Let's just say that. So be warned. And then I read another thriller. I actually had a great month of reading because I'm just gonna tell you right off the bat, this book was five stars. And that is None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. This is her new book. I love a nice hardcover thriller. Something about them is just great. Like the text is big. Look at that. It's great. This one has a podcast in it, which I didn't realize I would love so much. But from the moment you start reading this book, it is so fascinating. You kind of don't understand what's going on because it starts in this restaurant where this one woman is having her birthday and then she sees this other woman across the room who she kind of just gets obsessed with immediately. She's like, that woman is so beautiful. She's also having her birthday party, which means we're birthday twins. And she like meets her in the bathroom and it turns out not only are they birthday twins, but they're the exact same age. But she feels like this woman is like everything that she wishes she was. So she just gets obsessed with her and the perfect woman has this podcast where women come on and tell their inspirational stories. I cannot remember her name. That's why I keep saying this woman. So Josie is like, hey, I think that I should be on your podcast because I don't have this great inspirational story to tell yet, but I'm in the midst of making a really big life change and you should document it on your podcast. It'll be really interesting, I swear. Alex, this podcast host is kind of freaked out by her, of course, because it's just weird. But then she's like, maybe she's right. You can come on the podcast and like, tell me your life story and tell me what this big life change is. And it just gets insane from there. And at no point did I want to put down this book. This was a great five-star thriller. I think it is my second favorite thriller I've ever read of all time after House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I highly recommend you pick this one up if you like thrillers. And then I read another hardcover thriller. Would you look at these? So pretty. This is All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. I gave her other book a 4.5, so I was very excited for this one. This one is about a woman who's child goes missing and it's a year later she still has not found him and of course she is still looking for him and that's basically it i kind of was very bored at the beginning i'm having trouble remembering why i didn't like this book that much i think it was because i was so bored throughout all of it and then i finally got interested and then it was kind of good and then the end just let me down so it was like the middle chunk was pretty good but then the beginning and end were disappointing and i feel like this happened in her other book too which kind of makes me view her other book differently i feel like she creates these really big plot points that need solving or else like there's a massive hole in the explanation. And then she tries to explain it within like one or two sentences at the end. And that's just not a sufficient explanation when I've read this entire book to find a solution. And then the solution is one sentence and it still doesn't make sense. That's like the worst thing you could have in a thriller, I feel like. So I gave it a 3.5 because I did have a great time like in the middle and I was like, oh, where's this gonna go, blah, blah. And then it just kind of fell flat. So interesting author. It's always weird when you have authors where like one book's rated super highly and then the next one is just not a hit for you at all. I feel like that's happened a few times to me this year and it's confusing. So I basically don't know if I'm gonna read the author again unless I think the cover of the book is really pretty or the premise of it sounds really interesting. So 3.5 is a pretty high rating though. So she's still a good thriller author in my opinion. Super popular, but this one was not satisfying to me. And then I started the Natural series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I love that this series just randomly got big all of a sudden because she's the author of The Inheritance Games and that's been big. And these are like her old books, I think before she wrote The Inheritance Games. And then they just randomly got popular everywhere, but I really like the covers of them. And everyone is describing it as criminal minds if kids with supernatural abilities were part of the FBI, which sounds super interesting, kind of sounds like Stranger Things. I will say though, their superpowers are not super supernatural. They're just kind of like child prodigies. Like it almost feels like people People in real life could have these abilities, but they're just like super specialized in them. Like one of the characters can just read emotions really easily. Another girl is really good with numbers and statistics and like knows the statistics of everything. So it's not like crazy superpowers are happening in these books, but there are different murders that they're trying to solve. And there's a love triangle as well. I will say I was not as obsessed with it as I thought I would be because I was obsessed with the inheritance games. And for this one, I think I gave it a four star. I didn't really care about the romance that much yet. I'm actually in the middle of the second one right now. And I'm kind of feeling the same. Like once I'm reading it, I really like it. But then when I put it down, I kind of forget that I'm liking it. So it's hard for me to pick it up again. So I'm not obsessed yet, but I'm assuming by the fourth book, I will be. So great start to the series, super big font. You can fly through these books really fast. And that's really motivating if you're in a reading slump. So I'd highly recommend any of her books for a reading slump. Four stars for this one. Oh, I'm missing a book actually that I read. I'm gonna have to get up and Spock's gonna get mad at me. This is where the 24 hour reading video came in. So if you haven't seen that, it's on my main channel. But I started it off with Morning Star by Pierce Brown. This is the third book in the Red Rising sci-fi adult trilogy. And I love this series because so many people who do not read sci-fi read these books and end up loving them, which is so awesome because they're just great books. So even if you don't read that genre, I feel like you should give it a go. I won't lie. I felt so stupid at the beginning of this book. I was forgetting character names. It was confusing. I probably didn't understand it to the fullest extent, but I just kind of pushed 
through that and was hoping that things would click more. And they did. Once I got to the middle, I was like, okay, now I understand what's happening. And the last like hundred pages of this book are so insane, so good. Five stars easily. The whole series has been a five stars. I have now completed the Red Rising trilogy. There are more books after this, but this is technically a completed trilogy that you can read and the story kind of wraps up, but it kind of doesn't on the last page of Morningstar. So isn't this so satisfying? I'm very proud of myself for completing a sci-fi adult trilogy. His face on the back of these books always gets me and they're so pretty. If you haven't read this series, I highly recommend it. Even if it's out of your comfort zone, I think you'll love these books, even if you just read the first one. They're so great. I highly recommend it everyone. And I definitely want to keep reading the series because a new book just came out in July, but I think they just keep getting longer and longer. But if I wait, I'm going to start forgetting character names. So I'm going to have to figure out when I'm going to read those books, but I highly recommend five stars, six stars for the series. And then I read another arc. This one comes out in November as well. And this is Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. So I guess I read two of her books this month. This one is chess themed and I was obsessed with chess at one point. And it's also her first young adult book, which I think is interesting because some people say that her adult books can kind of read like young adult because they're so like whimsical and like silly and jokey. And I feel like her young adult one actually read more adult. This is obviously super subjective, but I just feel like anything sexual related in young adult books is just kind of weird to me because it says that people 14 and up can read it. I know with betting on you, it said 12 and up, which makes a little bit more sense because there's like absolutely nothing in there, but there definitely is some of those topics in this book, which was interesting to me. I was like, oh, this definitely feels like an adult author wrote this young adult book almost to the point where it feels like it could just be like an adult romance with not really any spice. Like there's still kind of though, like it's closed door. It's kind of weird. I don't know how to explain it. But other than that, I loved her relationship to her family. And I really did like the main guy character in this book a lot. If you follow chess, it's really interesting because Allie Hazelwood is kind of known to write fan fiction. So the love hypothesis was like a Star Wars fan fiction. And I saw on a Goodreads review that this book is supposed to be a fan fiction of Magnus Carlsen and another girl in the chess world who I actually like watch her YouTube videos. It says Anna Crambling. I don't know if this is true. If it is, I do not <laughs> think that's like a thing in real life at all and would be a very interesting pairing in the chess world to write a book about. So I kind of wish I'd never seen that review and I fully discarded it in my mind because the characters in this book are like 17. So, or no, they're 18. So I just did away with that knowledge, but loved the chess in this book and loved basically everything else. So I gave it 4.5 stars. A banger of a book, I will say. And then I read How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. This is the one with all the pretty art on it. And I really didn't know what I was getting myself into with this book, but basically, as you can see, there's a small airplane on the book. First chapter, she gets in a crash in that small airplane. If you have a fear of flying, I don't know if that will affect you, but keep in mind, this is like a small recreational plane. This is not any commercial flight or anything like that. It's like a tiny plane. Basically after that chapter, she's in the hospital recovering from this accident. Yeah, she's in the hospital for a long time. I won't reveal like anything else that happens or like what her condition ends up being, but Catherine Center's books are more of like a women's fiction that explore relationships between friends, family, romantic relationships, and the romance is like a super strong subplot, but it's definitely still just like a women's fiction book. And it's about how this woman is coping with this massive life change and the drama that's happening in her family and in her love life. And let me just say the romance in this book, in my opinion, is a must read. Like this is one of the most unique romances I've ever read in a book. And it was so special. Like the way that I was reacting to words on a piece of paper were just ridiculous. Anytime the love interest was on the screen, not on the screen, on in like in the pages, I was freaking out. It was so good. So don't get scared by me saying like women's fiction because when I hear women's fiction, I just picture it being boring because I personally have not read too many things in that category that have been super great to me, but her writing is so funny and so fast paced and the romance was insane. So I gave this 4.5 stars, but honestly, it's so good. Like I'm still thinking about these characters, which is a sign that it's like a super almost five star book and I highly recommend it. The only thing I'll say, I don't know if I got sad from reading this book or if I was just like had a day irregardless of this book, but it could be sad. To read because this woman is going through something that is very sad and it just talks about in our lives when we go through big changes how to cope with those things and she always writes like little inspirational things that are very uplifting at the end but she's also like very real about how much she kind of it's it, it's a little dark 
at the end, okay? Not a little, it's pretty dark at the end with how this character copes, but the romance and the exploration of everything else in the book. But the romance was just so amazing. So that's like mostly what I'm talking about, but it's not a romance book. So just putting that out there, but you should read it. And then lastly, I read The Intern by Michelle Campbell. This was one of the book of the month thrillers for the month. And this one just looks so interesting. This one takes place in, in the court of law, I guess you would say. I don't really know how you would say it, but basically we're following Madison who is in law school and she dreams of being the intern for this one judge. Her brother has also just been sent to prison for something that he did not do. So there's some foul play going on here. Okay, and the judge of her brother's case is the same judge that she wants to be an intern for and then she basically just gets caught up with some very bad people. I will say that this one started off slower, but then it got so interesting and I feel like it got so interesting in this book particularly because it feels like something that could actually happen in real life. I obviously don't know anything about that stuff. It kind of feels like Breaking Bad a little bit. It's crazy. Obviously the ending doesn't feel like something that could happen in real life. I gave this four stars. It was a solid read. The only reason it's not higher than a four star is because the beginning was a little bit slow for me and I kind of was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this, but then I ended up really, really, really enjoying it. And the characters are very memorable to me. Like I still think about them and I usually never think about thriller characters after reading a book. So if you're like in law school, if you think that kind of genre is interesting, I would highly recommend that you read this one. How cute these books were this month and a few hardcovers. It was a great reading month. I already posted my September TBR, so go ahead and watch that if you want to. I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet. Goodbye.